I have a, an ER40 collet check. So, uh, this is from uh, RDG tools, and they come in two halves. So the first bit screws onto the nose of the spindle, and the idea is that <coughs> this face here, where the two parts join, um, you're supposed to turn that square to the axis or the spindle of the machine tool, which I did. And then I fitted the nose with the thread on and the taper. Um, and I thought I'd see how, how, how good it was for run out on the taper. So I clocked um, the taper for concentricity and found that it was running out by like 150 microns, which is just appalling really for a collet chuck. Um, and I like to use collet chucks a lot, as much as possible. Um, it's my preferred way of holding round parts. So because I knew it was running out, I knew that I was going to need to do something about that. So I turned this diameter so that I've got a register that I can come back to that's easy to clock, just to check, you know, occasionally is it still running true, um, you know. Uh, and what I did was um, I set up the compound slide and I set that to the correct angle using some angle um, slips, which I'll um, I'll try to remember to insert a, a picture into the video. And um, and what I did was I, I clamped it to the bed of the machine, and then I um, I attached the dial gauge to the compound slide and just ran it along the gauge until the compound slide was running out within ten microns. Um, I thought that was probably good enough, and then I turned the taper. So I've got a nice finish, uh, the tape is nice and true now um, and work is concentric within that collet now within 10 microns or so. So it's not perfect but it's you know less than a tenth of what it was. So I'd call that a success. Okay. Um, so the other major thing I suppose um, well, in terms of expensive major, uh, was the DRO. So I went for a Newell, Newell DRO. Um, they're not cheap. They're dearer than the MDRO um, kits that you can buy. Um, I did have, previously to this machine, I did have a Myford Super 7, uh, a green one. And again, I'll, I'll insert a video uh, just to show that. And that was with an MDRO kit, which is, um, it, it, it utilises um, all existing screw threads on the machine. Um, so there's no mods needed to the machine itself. Whereas the, the new old DRO kit does require um, <coughs> some holes to be drilled and tapped. So I was a little bit nervous, I must admit, um, about doing that to a brand new machine. Um, but um you know it shouldn't be beyond my capability i i am an engineer um a, so um i uh i just got on with it and and it was fine um it's nice it's nice material to drill and tap it's cast iron um and it went fine um i would say there's a few things that i'd like to sort out um so when i bring the the uh, cross slide back here um, what can happen is that uh, the bracket that mounts the end of the encoder um, will clash with the bolt that locks down the carriage. So, um, let's see if you can see that. So I need to take a little scallop out of that bracket to clear the, the head of the bolt because what happens is there's still probably another 40, 50 mil to come back on the travel. Um, now, I don't need it for where the tool post is currently, but if I were to mount anything to here, like a ball turning attachment, for example, then I may probably want to have that additional travel. So I need to do something about that. And also where the yellow tape is, that's where there's supposed to be an oil, an oiling port, um, which obviously you can't have anymore because um, 
the bracket would clash with it. So just a couple of things really. And while I'm talking about the DRO, um, in the long term, we'll, we'll see what happens because this is kind of, this kind of um, combines with another point really. So um, if I bring in the tailstock, right, so that's as far, or that's as close to the carriage that the tailstock can get. And it's because it clashes with the aluminium angle that covers the, uh, the DRO. So that's about 40, 45 mil long. Um, so that just means that um, you have to have the spindle extended from the tailstock longer than you really prefer to if you turn between centers for example and I actually found because I was I was doing a job um, between centers the other day and I found that um, I had to bring the cross slide back in order to get the the turning tool at the start of the work and um, <clears throat> so okay it's not a major problem um, uh, but if I didn't have compound slide on and I had the block on that I was talking about before I wouldn't have that option so I was thinking about a solution to that now <clears throat> one option would be to move the encoder to the front here um, but the problem with that is clearance with the chuck and I don't like the idea of that um, so um, we'll see how much of a problem it is um, over time and, and if it if it really is an issue then I'll do something about it but one thought is is that um, I might I mount the encoder inside the um, the cross slide and the added benefit of that of course is that it's entirely protected uh, from coolant from swarf whereas here I mean I tend not to use an airline on, on my machines but you know um, it isn't entirely beyond the risk of getting damaged there so <coughs> so what I may do is um, is either drill a long deep hole into here or I might just machine a channel somewhere into it where I can um, put the encoder in and then maybe even put a cover plate along the front here something along those lines and then the reader which is under there that could fit on the back here so that that's another option um, I think my when they when they do fit the ROs they do uh, mount them inside the cross slide um, so that's something to potentially consider but as I say we'll see um, over time we'll see how much of a problem it really is <coughs> So, um, so those are my thoughts really, those are my impressions, um, overall I'm very happy with the machine, um, it is accurate, um, you know, uh, the, the DRO um, is really useful, um, I can dial in a cut and, and I get exactly that, um, exactly the size of cut that I was uh, intending to make. Um, it's nice and true, it's running well, um, it's, it's lovely and quiet, um, and um, I can give a quick demo of that. Speed controller. So it does get a bit noisy, of course, when you engage the lead screw, but you know, that's to be expected. Um, so all in all, it's, uh, it's a cracking little machine. I'm really happy with it. Um, the Connoisseur model, um, uh, there's all kinds of things that I probably could have mentioned. Um, uh, another mod actually um, will be to put uh, a swarf cover over the front here because Whilst um, <clears throat> whilst the bed is hardened, um, the carriage isn't, of course. So um, 
so that'll be good to uh, to protect the carriage really from any bits of cast iron that may may land on the, on the bed um, but all in all it seems a really nice machine um, and um, I took the plunge took, and uh, I bought a brand new one um, and uh, other than the, the very minor teething problems really um, and I'll probably find more um, as I go but um, but yeah so far so good uh, very happy with it um, and um, I'll be back with some uh, follow up videos of some of the parts that I'm making and, um, and I'll probably give you a, a tour of my optical shop sometime soon. Thanks for watching.